Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, wine labels. European wine labels especially can be quite confusing. You get a lot of information and sometimes you don't understand what it's trying to tell you. We have to bear in mind that European wine regions were largely started by the Romans 2,000 years ago and we have all of that history contained within the label. Whereas wines from the New World, from Australia or America are often featuring the grape variety, which is the most important thing to tell you how the wine tastes. Um, the European wine label will usually tell you precisely where it's from, but not much more than that. So as an example here, we have a Burgundy, but we use the word Burgundy. The French use the word Bourgogne. So you can see there it says Grand Vin de Bourgogne, it simply means uh, a top wine from Burgundy. And then you'll notice that top European wine has a system called Appellation Contrôlée, which is written here. Appellation, the name of the village, and then Contrôlée. This is a system that was started in the 1920s in France, uh, and it's simply guaranteed that the wine comes from where it says it does. In this case, it's the two villages of Viray and Clesse within Burgundy. So Appellation Viray Clesse means a wine that's guaranteed to come from those two villages only. Uh, everything else here is a bit really uh, the producer's choice. So mise en bouteille means bottled uh, by Ton Vin Cantin, which is the name of the producer, and they've got his address there. Uh, and then the legal stuff, which is how much contents there are, three quarters of a litre, and the alcohol level, which has to be there by law. But the one thing this wine doesn't tell you, even on the back, is what grape it's made from, or how it's made, or how it tastes all of which you might find on the front and back labels of a bottle of wine from, say, Australia or New Zealand. In fact, because it's burgundy and it's white, it has to be Chardonnay. But this is the kind of stuff that you only learn with lots of practice. So that's how to read roughly the contents of a French wine label. Italian wine labels can be even more complicated, unfortunately. <laughs> um, firstly, the Italian equivalent of Appellation Controle is a literal translation, it's denominazione d'origine controllata. But unlike in France where that's enough, in Italy you have another layer which is denominazione d'origine controllata e garantita. So it's controlled and it's guaranteed, which is very Italian I think. Uh, and you can notice this because they will always have a strip, pink for red wines and green for white wines, and it's usually brown for sparkling wines and sweet wines. In this case, this is from the DOCG, Denominazione d'Origine Controllata e Garantita, of Barolo, one of Italy's finest, grandest wine names. Within that, you'll see it written in full, and the word Barolo, the producer Conterno, which is one of the best. Uh, this is a single vineyard wine called Monfortino, and it's actually Reserva. Reserva is a literal word, it means reserve, it means it's been extra aged, beyond the minimum. Uh, so this is the 2004 and actually this will be not far off the current release because they have to keep it for such a long time before they can sell it. You'll get a lot of other stuff with the producer's address, produced in Italy, the quantity, the alcohol, which are all legal requirements. So that's roughly how to read an Italian wine label. Sometimes you get wines, including great wines, that actually fall outside the legal systems. And this is probably the biggest example of them all. Um, this is a wine that's made in Tuscany, but it's made from the grape variety Cabernet Sauvignon, which is not a traditional variety in Tuscany. So the first producer who planted the grape variety there couldn't call it by the local denominazione d'origine controllata, which is Chianti, because it was made from a grape variety that's not allowed. So in fact, they just simply went with the phrase Vino Rosso Toscano, which is about as low as it can possibly get. But it was fairly soon established that uh, this is one of the greatest wines Italy can produce uh, and actually it deserved to have something a bit more than table red wine from Tuscany. Um, and in fact it's this very wine that created the idea of what's now called the Super Tuscans. You can generally spot them because they end Aya, Salaya, Ornalaya, Sassicaia, uh, Lupicaia and so on. And this was the first of them, a pure Cabernet Sauvignon wine that became so highly regarded that actually now it has a DOCG all of its own for this one property. And this, in fact, in 1985, Sassicaia was the first wine in Italy to receive a perfect 100 point rating from the wine advocate in America. So this is a very expensive bottle of wine, despite its low categorization.